it's getting a little bit late in the afternoon. It's about quarter to six at the moment. And the sun is sort of kind of about there, as you can see. It's sort of white in my arm out. Um, but we're going to carry on uh, with this mailbag session. So this is mailbag. These are comments and questions that you guys leave on the channel. Uh, but before we get into that, we've got to do the normal parish notices. If you haven't subscribed, why not? Hit the subscribe button if you want to be notified when content hits the, ch the channel. It's the bell icon for you. If you've watched this video and you like the contents, give it a thumbs up. Um, down there somewhere should be the Patreon uh, address and the Facebook and Instagram feeds. Um, consider supporting the, the channel on Patreon. I can't get my words out. And subscribe on one of the feeds to be notified about uh, notifications about the channel and what the channel's up to and what shenanigans I get up to. So now back to the video. I think I've said before, you guys are leaving so many questions on the channel that um, it kind of sometimes I struggle to keep up with you guys in the, sort of the time I have available. But I am answering the questions as as we go. Uh, those that I feel should be aired on, on Mailbag, I'm airing on Mailbag, or I'm just answering you directly. Um, but this video, this Mailbag session will have four questions that have arisen from the same video. And that particular video is the Korg T1 restoring the settings using SysX from your computer. A video I did in September 2017. Well, oh, it's got a big wiped out panel there. Um, but as long as you can see this bit, it's fine. Um, the first one comes from Ulis Guitari Almada. And I have pronounced that appallingly wrong, I'm sure. Um, and he writes uh, in response to this Korg T1 video, hello, your tutorial is very good, but I have not been able to restore the sounds of, to my Korg T3. Where can I get the files Korg T1 MIDI settings.ini and Korg T1 setup.ini? I will thank you forever. And he leaves his email address. So um, firstly, a piece of housekeeping, please. Uh, guys, please don't put your email addresses on the comments section of the channel. Um, now, I think, and I know the reason why you want, because you want people to get in contact with you, and I don't have a problem with that. The issue I have is that if somebody were to read those comments, they've got your email address and they can spam you and do all kinds of weird things with your email address. So please, please, please don't leave your email address on the channel. Um, if you want to contact me directly, my email address is uh, in the contact section. You can press the button and it'll, and it'll fire up an email but don't leave your email addresses on the channel that's just a piece of housekeeping um i've in the past not published people's comments because of the fact they've left email addresses and i can't actually edit out the email address all i can do is delete your comment um so just the word to the wise don't do it um so that's the first thing um the second part part is that there, there are a number of places on the internet where you can get hold of. Um, I'm not sure they're they're named Korg T MIDI settings dot ini and Korg T one setup dot ini, um, but there are a number of places on the internet where you can get the the uh, effectively the factory sounds uh, in some sort of format. Um, now. If you haven't got the factory sounds or you don't want, you know, you're not happy with sort of like jumping them backwards and forwards with SysX. And I find, I've said this before on the channel, I find using SysX to do this stuff an utter pain in the bum. Um, I'd rather have a floppy disk. So again, if you want it on floppy disk, there is a link down below to somewhere where you can go and get the floppy disk uh, with the settings already saved onto those floppy disks for you to in install on your T-Series machine. So hopefully that works. Um, the next one comes from ChavyTDT. Um, again, in response to this Korg T1 restoring settings video. Um, Hi, I have followed your instructions you have given to restore my Korg X3. Well, I didn't do instructions for a Korg X3, but I suppose it's similar. Um, after it's lost the battery and it won't work, I can dump from the X3 to the laptop. I can send MIDI files to the X3. But when I send SysX files to the X3, it doesn't show data is received. I have tried changing the delay buffer size again with no luck. What can I do? Please, can you help? And um, this is an interesting one um, because, again, um, I think... Um, there's some language issues here, 
but the way I read this is you can send stuff out from the, the X3 to your laptop and it's recorded correctly. You can receive um, a MIDI style file from your laptop into the uh, X3 with program data. Again, so that means your MIDI is, is working fine, you, your buffer sizes and your transmit times and all that sort of stuff. It sounds like you've got those set up correctly. So that I don't think is where your issue is. Now, you know, coming completely clean on this, I don't have a Korg X3. So um, I found in, my, in the past that a lot of Korg machines are based on the same pattern. So I'm going to assume that the Korg X3 is on the same pattern as other Korg synths. Um, so the way I would work this is first run all the diagnostics. Um, the, let, let's go through the diagnostics, and I've just been through those. You can dump from laptop, you can receive from MIDI, um, you can receive from the laptop, so your MIDI's fine. You've got all that set up. So this leads me to think about protection on the global settings. Um, so the first thing is, is the SysX file correctly formatted? Um, and this may sound a bit daft, but if you've got the SysX file from somewhere on the internet, you've got no idea how the guy recorded it, okay? You have absolutely no idea. You basically have a, a SysX file that you've downloaded from the internet. So it could be good, it could be bad, you have no idea. And unless you're good at reading SysX, and believe me, it is a not a, not something you really want to read, um, you wouldn't know whether it's good or bad. Um, so the first thing is, is it, is it correctly formatted? And I think, you know, probably on a, on a user group, you might be able to get somebody else to sort of tell you whether it is or not. If you recorded it yourself, have you recorded it properly? Now, the fact you can dump from the from the X3 to the laptop means that you have the you know you have the ability to record. Are you just recording it correctly, or have you not? Um, but I suspect where the problem is is that you haven't released the protection settings on the global settings. Protection, yeah, protection settings on the global settings. Yes. Um, so what you need to do is you need to go into the memory protect area and. Again, I'm not sure how the X3 does it, but on definitely on the T series, there's a series of menus and you go in and you say, I want to unprotect the sequencer, I want to unprotect the programs and combis, and I want to unprotect the global settings. And if you haven't unprotected the global settings, if you try to write global parameters back in, the, the T series will just reject it. And I suspect that is what is going on here. So my advice to you is to go and uh, have a look at those global protection settings and see if you've unprotected them, because if you haven't unprotected them, that's what you need to do. Hope it helps. <laughs> okay, the next one from Eremis Angairoso Avagorostis. Guys, you're killing me. <laughs> um, and they write, I have a Korg uh, O1W FD and I will connect it with SysLiberian. Do I have the same global settings? Also, do I have to change these settings again to default when I disconnect it? Um, I'm not quite sure I quite understand this, but I'll attempt to answer it. Um, the bottom line is when you uh, undertake a SysX style restore, it is only, you only need to unprotect the parts of the synth that you're restoring to. So if you're restoring to the programs, you only need time to protect the programs. If you're restoring to the sequencer, you only need time to protect the sequencer. If you're restoring the global settings, you only need time to protect them. Or if you're install, restoring everything, you need to unprotect everything. Okay, that's kind of the bottom line. Um, so you only, whatever you're trying to restore, you need to unprotect. Um, and that basically stops the wrong data being inserted. Now, the problem you have is if you try to read a SysX file and you've unprotected the programs and combis and you have an, and it contains global data or sequence data and you have an unprotected one of those areas, the synth will throw an error, okay? Because it is trying to write to somewhere that it's not allowed to write to, okay? So that could be one of the issues going on here. So you have to be really clear on what your SysX file contains and what you're trying to restore to where, okay, on, on the Korg synths. That's the way it works. Or it's the way it, 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 everything, all of the ones I've, I've played with work, so I can't see the O1W being very much different. 
Um, now, in terms of once you've loaded the stuff onto your, your keyboard, do you go back and re-enable the protections? Now, I have to be honest and say, in my case, I've left the protections off. And the reason for doing that is because I'm shunting stuff backwards and forwards all the time when I'm playing with that particular synthesizer. Okay, and it is more aggro to have to keep setting, turning the protection settings on and off than it is just to leave them off. That's me. However, if you are loading a set into the keyboard and you want to make sure that that set is not overridden or overwritten, sorry, for some reason, then set the protects back to on. So, you know, if you're going to take the, the keyboard on the road and you want to make sure that every night when you switch that keyboard on, you have everything that you need ready to go, switch it on. Okay, that way you can't lose it by accidentally overwriting it, if that makes sense. Anyway, that's me. That's how I do it. You may do it in a different way. Ooh. So the next one is from Eric Guitara uh, in response to the Korg T1 restoring video. Uh, restoring settings video I did. Uh, and Eric writes, Hello, thanks for explaining me the data dump between my M1 and T1. I was on X global mode and not off. Now it goes and my T1 disk is out of order. So do you know knows a way where I can find all the SysX and data program for the T1, T2, T3 series RAM disk? Um, right, Eric, I'm gonna I'm gonna be honest. My opinion is go get yourself a new disk, okay, a new floppy disk uh, drive. Um, there is a guy on eBay at the moment flogging them for about 40 quid. Uh, I'll put a link below the video. Go get yourself a new disk. Uh, it is far easier to work with the T1 with floppy disk drives. And if you look up there, you can see my disks that I use, those two boxes in the far corner. That's my studio disk that I use with these machines, okay? Um, it is far easier, honestly, honestly, it is far easier using the, the floppy disk than it is using SysX. We may be forced to use SysX when we run out of floppy disk, but at the moment it is still easier using floppy disks. Um, and to be honest, fitting the disk is relatively easy. Um, maybe I need to do a video about it, but I'm going to describe how to do it. There's effectively the three screws along the center of the T1. Pop that. You can lift the lid up. Once you can lift the lid up, you can then, there are four screws in this area where the disk drive is. You drop those, pull those screws out the disk drive, then you can then push from behind the disk drive out, disconnect it, put the new drive in, reverse the connections, push it in, screws up from the bottom, down the case goes. Job done. I will do a video showing how to do it, but it is literally that simple. Um, so, uh, honestly, go get yourself a disc. Uh, <laughs> uh, now, you can go, there are a number of places on the internet um, that uh, you can go and get the SysX files, um, or if you want a disc, a proper disc of it, then there will be, again, in the video down below, there will be a link to a web page where you can acquire the factory disc. Um, there's a number of dis other discs on there, so you just may need to sort of scroll up and down, but the factory disc is there, believe me. You can go and get the factory disc. That will restore your T1 every single time back to factory, and it's one of the most useful discs I have in that box of discs up there. Um, so... The only other thing I would say about downloading stuff from the internet, normal health health warnings, you don't know where it's come from, who did what with it, and especially with things like zip libraries and compressed libraries and that sort of stuff, you have no idea what's in there. So make sure you know, you've know you got good antivirus before you hit the button to say ex extract. 